welcome to the first instalment of Is It Time To Start Giving A Shit? Where I'm going to be talking about something we all have a shared and universal requirement for, air. So I've been looking specifically into air pollution and its effects on human health. Now, you're not going to be hearing any of my own personal opinion, no tabloid nonsense, no pseudoscience or half-truths. I've done all the reading and research for you and every statement I make is based on recent scientific study historical fact or the latest statistics with references and the references will all be popping up as we go along and you can check them all out follow it up and make sure it's all legit so how bad is the issue and are those lefty tree hugging soap dodgers just whinging on about nothing as usual well most air pollution is completely indiscernible at ground level you can't see it and you can't smell it which is why london usually looks like this on a sunny day even when the pollution levels actually look like this. London did used to have a very visible air pollution problem during the 1950s, or the Great Smog as it was called, but it has now become even worse than it was back then, to the point that more people have died in London from air pollution in the last 18 months than they did throughout the whole of the Great Smog back in the 1950s, and the population size has actually changed very little since then. A recent study carried out for Transport for London by experts at King's College concluded that 9,500 people die prematurely in the city every year from air pollution. So the problem hasn't gone away, it's just taken a new form of less visible but equally harmful gases like benzene, ozone, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons. All of these are either carcinogens, so known cancer-causing agents, or they have their own individual adverse health effects like heart disease, stroke, respiratory disease, diabetes, but then there are the real hidden killers, the NOx gases, nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen oxide, and the particulate matter. Now these are now known to be seriously bad for human health, especially for the elderly and especially for children. In London, 328,000 school children are exposed to illegal and unhealthy daily levels of toxic air. And there's now a vast body of very robust evidence that links particulate air pollution to autism, schizophrenia, and other neurodevelopmental disorders. One study at the University of Rochester in the US found that exposure to normal city levels of particulate pollution caused inflammation in the brains of young mice. Now the ventricles, part of the circulatory system of the brain, were inflamed and enlarged, taking up space that would otherwise be taken up by growing white matter, by brain matter. Now when this dilation of the ventricles is seen in humans, it's called ventriculomegaly, it has very, very pronounced and well-known behavioral consequences. And Ventricular megaly is actually what they specifically look for at the 20 week scan during pregnancy to check for spina bifida, Down syndrome and other birth defects. As it turns out, diesel engines, the fuel the public were encouraged to switch to because of slightly lower CO2 emissions, they pump out around 20 times more NOx gases and nearly 65% more particulate pollution than petrol engines. This particulate matter is the least visible, completely odorless, and more importantly, the least regulated form of pollution, and it's being produced in vast, vast quantities by modern combustion engines in cars, lorries, buses, taxis, anything running on fuel, but worst in diesels. Particulate matter is tiny, invisible, ultra-fine microparticles called PM10s and PM2.5s, less than 100 nanometers, 30 times less than the width of a human hair, or smaller, but with complex chemistry on their surface. This is the stuff that gets down into the depths of the lungs, penetrates the membrane, gets into the blood, and aggravates the body on a cellular level. The International Agency for Research on Cancer now states categorically that exhaust fumes and particulate matter are a leading and known cause of cancer, and the World Health Organization puts the global death toll from air pollution at 7 million a year, killing more than AIDS and malaria combined. 50,000 of those deaths occur here in the UK. So, these are the facts, the stats, and the latest evidence. Is it time to start giving a shit? I'll leave that with you. Thanks for watching. Until next time.